they're just pleasant backgrounds. I can check box right here where we won't have a background or be a grayish background. There won't be any logos in it. IVR, this is where we actually specify our IVR service. If we have multiple services, this is where we would specify them. Notice we do have to do a conference service and a gateway service. Uh, we also can uh, require a chairperson. So if you dial in and the chairperson has not entered the conference yet, then the conference will basically be placed on hold and you'll be given a message that you're waiting on the chairperson to arrive. Okay. Now, here's a recording area, recording capability on my RMX setup. Uh, then this is where I can add a checkbox to enable it. Right now I can't because I haven't set up the recording link. But I'll go back and add that in a little bit. Um, this allows me to either record immediately or record on demand, uh, meaning when I press the record button, uh, either on the remote control or potentially on RMX, DMA, or the RSS itself. Network services is where I'm going to specify any alternative services I may require, SIP registration. Uh, if I had um, ISDN, I'd also have a checkbox down here for the ISDN services. Based on all that, I'm going to click OK, and you'll see that we'll actually have our training profile. Notice it's specified for auto layout at 384. That's our routing name. It's not encrypted, and it looks like it's OK. So in that few uh, minutes, we've actually created our own conference profile. OK, so we built our profile. Now we need to tie it to something, uh, in this case, a meeting room. Uh, the profile is kind of like the outside of the meeting room. It's a physical meeting room. It lays out the tables and the chairs and, and things like that. Uh, the meeting room itself is really tied more for the person who's going to use that, that profile. Okay. Uh, so, for instance, if I go to, into a conference room, I may have the tables set up one way and the chairs set up one way, and, and John goes in behind me and he kind of moves things around and changes the way the layout's going to be or changes the kind of the look and feel. Uh, so he kind of customizes it or uses a profile of his own liking. Meeting rooms are really uh, where we define who's coming into the meeting and some other parameters like that. So let's go in here and build our own meeting room. So we're going to go down to the tab and we're going to click on meeting room. Notice there are four meeting rooms pre-built. Those are the default meeting rooms from the Polycom factory, and they'll always be uh, initially available on every RMX. Can I delete them? Absolutely. Can I change them? Absolutely. Uh, you're not tied to keeping those there. We just put them out there to make life easier for you as you uh, begin using your new RMX uh, multipoint bridge. So I'm going to click Create a New Meeting Room, and it's going to pop up a window here in a second. I'm going to drag it up just a little bit so it fits. And so there, it's pre-named my meeting already, my meeting room. It's given the name Gary, and it's a, basically it's a timestamp. I'm going to erase the timestamp because I want it to have just my name. Now also available there is a duration of the meeting. That's the base duration of the meeting. It can be extended. But uh, that's what we're going to initially set it up for. I do have a checkbox over here for creating permanent conferences. Uh, that's a conference. Once it goes up, never comes down until you physically, as an operator, uh, go in, operator administrator, and actually um, terminate the conference. Oftentimes used in emergency situations. Uh, military uses that a fair amount. So it just might be uh, something uh, important there. So routing name again, here's my meeting room net routing name, uh, and I'm going to call it uh, Gary's uh, Training. Okay. Now, I'm not going to use the factory profile. I'm going to build that training profile that we built a, few, uh, a little bit ago. Okay. Now, ID, that is the numeric ID of my meeting room. And I'm going to create it as 1, 2, 3, 4. You can create that meeting room to be almost any number, that uh, ID, almost any number you want to have. Um, again, it has to meet your dialing plan. So uh, 
one of the fundamental things you have to set up in the beginning is a good dialing plan. Uh, conference password, that would be the next entry down there. If I need a password or want one, I can assign one. I can also assign a separate password for the chairperson to give him that uh, capability. Uh, reservation uh, resources, if I want to reserve, I think I'm going to have six people in my call all the time. I can go ahead and reserve six um, resources for them. Now, I might also want to reserve audio resources for people dialing in uh, potentially over SIP or and or over a SIR or a POTS call. Now, if they're going to dial in over a POTS call, I'm also going to need the appropriate ISDN uh, capabilities, uh, a PRI. So you can't just click that up and instantly have audio. So just be aware of that. Uh, maximum number of participants, where we can limit how many participants we want to have in our call, or we can uh, just let it float. And I'm just going to let it float. If I had ISDN here, I could enable it down here. Uh, it turns out this bridge does not have an ISDN network connection. Uh, but if I did, I could go down here and initially set it, um, say that I want to use it and what my dial-in numbers would be. Now, my uh, participants, uh, I can actually add outgoing participants at this point in time. I probably won't since I don't have any uh, set up yet. Uh, so an information, I can specify other information about my conference. Okay, so right now I'm just going to do my meeting room and I'm going to click OK. And you're going to see it's going to create my new meeting room right here. So in that simple of a uh, setup, literally uh, four or five minutes, we are able to create a basic meeting room. Now this is very handy. Uh, anybody can use this meeting room that they want. All they do is dial into meeting room one, two, three, four, and this meeting room will automatically start up uh, using the parameters set in the uh, training profile. And that meeting will be meeting room will be established up and ready. Um, oftentimes people will build meeting rooms for individuals in the company and that's pretty easy to do obviously we just did it but what happens if I have thousands of employees I want to have meeting rooms for thousands of employees that's where a feature of DMA our, uh, our uh, dynamic management application uh, has the ability to go in and build those meeting rooms based on active directory information and he builds meeting rooms for every single user automatically uh, the operators such as myself in this case we don't have to build a bunch of individual meeting rooms it's all done automatically for us so you might want to go in and look at uh, DMA if you have uh, interest in building thousands of meeting rooms uh, I think the upper limit last time I saw on DMA is somewhere around uh, nearly half a million uh, virtual meeting rooms so that might be of interest so we got our meeting room built uh, let's move on to the next step there's another kind of special meeting room that exists in the RMX and that's called an entry queue let's go down and take a quick look at an entry queue uh, it's in the rarely used down here in entry queues and you notice we do have a default entry queue and I'm just going to click it open here so we can take a look at it uh, it's entry queue, it's ID is 1000, it's going to use the default profile. Now what is an entry queue? We sometimes call it a video lobby. It's an area where you come in and you're able to start a meeting and you may not know what conference you need to go to. Well, based on some static displays of, of images that you get when you sign into the RMX, uh, a default RMX as we have today, uh, it'll actually show you the four basic meeting rooms that are actually installed on the bridge. When you're in that meeting room, you're given some IVR prompting that helps you get into the, the appropriate uh, meeting room. Now, uh, one of the things that entry queues allow, and you notice right here, this little button, right here, said ad hoc. What that means is if you don't know what meeting room you need to go to and you get into the entry queue, you can type in a random meeting number and you'll create your own meeting room right on the fly, ad hoc or on demand. Uh, very easy to do, very handy. 
but that means if you were trying to go into meeting room 1004 and you mistyped it to 1005, RMX will automatically create a meeting room called 1005 using the default video profile and you'll be sitting there waiting on everybody to join and nobody else will join okay so a lot of times people will disable this ad hoc just by doing a checkbox so that you must type in a valid meeting room number uh, so just be aware of that and notice also uh, there's some uh, cascading information here uh, for the entry queue that's when I want to cascade two bridges together and I can define whether one will be master or one will be slave. And that's uh, oftentimes important when you go into an advanced cascaded environment. Uh, you need to read up in the RMX user's guide uh, if you have interest in uh, cascading. We don't really cover it in this uh, set of uh, video presentations. Network services, I can specify what services I want to allow. Uh, Windows off just a little bit there. Uh, whether it's SIP and whether I want to accept calls over SIP. So uh, this is the default entry queue. I could have multiple entry queues. Why would I have multiple entry queues? Well, maybe I want a set of entry queues that start at 2000. And those entry queues are actually there uh, and are in Spanish. Maybe I have an entry queue at 3000 and it's in Japanese. Uh, that way I can have various entry queues in various languages allowing multiple people to use my bridge in multiple languages. Uh, they still point to the appropriate meeting rooms but the entry queues themselves would be in different languages. Anyway, here's entry queues. They can be very, very handy. The default one works very well though as I pointed out you might want to disable the ad hoc function so people don't create a bunch of random meeting rooms. Now the good news is they create a meeting room, they log out of it after 10 minutes or so. If nobody else is in that meeting room, it will automatically hit the RMX, will automatically delete the meeting room. All right, next up, uh, we're going to look at adding endpoints in the directory. Okay, we have our RMX pretty much configured and it's time to start adding some uh, endpoints. now. Do I really need to add every endpoint that's going to call my bridge? Typically, no, uh, because they'll dial in and connect to a meeting room, and they'll be ready to go. But if I'm going to schedule a conference, I'm going to dial out to them, then there's a chance, if I am only using the RMX scheduler, that I'm going to need to actually have them uh, in my directory. So I'm going to sit here and start building a couple items, a couple endpoints that I have. Uh, available to me and so the first one I'm going to call it uh, HDX 108 and uh, his IP address happens to be 10.233.8.108 and I'm going to save it and I'm going to add another one that's uh, HDX 109 but I'm going to connect to him a little bit differently I'm going to use his East 164 address that happens to be 21109. Now I have to tell the bridge that I'm using an E64 now rather than an IP address. Now up there in the IP address space I have 0.0.0.0, .0 and it needs to stay there. Okay, so I'm going to add him. I'm going to add uh, a, another one just because I can and that's going to be uh, HDX110 I'm going to use, uh, uh, again, I'm going to use his E164 21110 and change his uh, address to be E164. And then I'm going to add one that's uh, on the other side of the room, HDX53, uh, and I'm going to use his IP address, uh, 8.53. So I've got those created. So I have four people over here, and now I have my, uh, now, I, now I need to build a conference. How do I build a conference? Well, over here under conferences, I have a little new conference button. So I'm going to click on that. And that new conference button is going to bring up a window. I'm going to pull it up here a little bit so we can see it a little better. It has my name. That happens to be the name that I signed in on the bridge with. Um, 
and it's using the factory default profile. Well, I think I'm going to use my training profile, that one we built uh, a little bit ago. Now, 